Okay. So it says that we're live here. And um, let's see, let's see if I can introduce. Hi, um, I'm Zoe, and I'm here today to present to you um, my esteemed co author, Jeff Hertzberg. And he is going to um, grill some pizza, and we're at his house in his backyard, and he has this beautiful tableau, and this day could not be any more gorgeous. And um, so I'm gonna turn it over to him because I think we're up and running and there are people here and hi, hi, <laughs> here he goes. Hey, hi everybody. Wait, 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 there you go, hey. okay. Hi everybody, thank you for coming. We are live from the upper Midwest in my backyard. So you're gonna hear any dog noises, any child noises, any chipmunk noises, which he goes <laughs> in his hole right back there. But we're gonna try to grill pizza on the grill because this is how I make bread all summer. So if, as I do this, it seems like I'm making it up as I go along. It's sort there of, could be some truth, could to, be that. truth <laughs> to that. Or if I've made a mistake, or if you have a question, please check in, because we're gonna take it from the top, which is mixing the dough, getting it flat, and then using cheeses to stick delicious ingredients onto it, and do it in that grill right there. All right, first of all, good dough is made with four ingredients, flour, water, yeast, and salt, but when you make pizza, you can put in olive oil, you don't have to. Um, it makes the dough a little bit more mm, sort of stretchy, a little bit easier to get flat. To be honest with you, I never do it. Just because I'm lazy, I use the same dough I make for everything else. Is there a question? Jeff, tell them where you're getting this recipe. Ah. And um, yeah, just tell them yeah. a little bit about that. So it's from our books. Uh, <laughs> the Artisan Bread in Five Minutes a Day books. This basic dough is in pretty much every book we've ever written, except a gluten-free one, where there's a gluten-free version of the same recipe. Uh, basically, with or without the olive oil, we're talking about a quarter cup swap out from the water. Oh, the other place this recipe appears is on our website, breadin5.com. And if you just put the words pizza in the search bar, you'll get to one of these. Or actually, for the very basic dough recipe, if you just put in um, back to basics, this basic dough, Full recipes there, you don't even have to buy our books unless you really want to. And that would mean Zoe might want to pan the books now or later, it's her call, because she's behind the camera today. Actually, there's a great opportunity. Zoe is behind the camera today, but lately a lot of you know she's been in front of the camera on her own TV show called Zoe Bakes on the Magnolia Network and another one that I've forgotten. <laughs> The other, net, the other, the other place to watch Discovery it, Plus. Discovery Plus. Yes. Magnolia Network, and, and it's on right now. And actually, I understand this week is bread baking using some of the techniques you'll see right here. Uh, the is one, um, the one coming up at the end of next okay, week. Great. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's mix the dough because sometimes I've been told that I talk too much before even starting with the mixing. So four ingredients. So I swapped out a quarter cup of the water already. I just took it out and I'm throwing in a quarter cup of olive oil. And I'm not gonna worry about whether it mixes because you know what they always say, doesn't mix, right? You're funny. Okay, I'm gonna put the liquid into a five and a half, six quart bucket. And I'm gonna throw the yeast in, in all the rest, that was uh, three cups of water. What if they don't have a bucket? They can use a soup pot or a crock or anything large, anything that's five quarts non-reactive. So I don't know, I probably wouldn't do it in aluminum or cast iron, but pretty much anything else. You could also cut the recipe in half if you don't want to make enough dough to store in the refrigerator for up to two weeks, which is really what differentiates our method from everybody else's. So three cups of liquid. Remember it was really two and three quarters of water and a quarter of olive oil, because I said I did that wouldn't be lying or anything. And what temperature? Um, okay, so lukewarm is what we call for. It means less than 100. I've never used a thermometer for this in my life. You can use cold water and you won't ever kill the yeast. People worry if you use boiling water, the yeast will die. Um, so if you use cold water, it won't rise in the two hours I'm gonna brag about here. Your brother says hi. Oh, hi, Rob. <laughs> By the way, Rob, um, Zoe is the sister we never wanted. Isn't that sweet? And I, I stole that joke. That in, I though. stole that joke from her. Well, if you're gonna tell me, Rob, it's on. Um, thanks for letting me know. Um, so this is the yeast. I'm using platinum from Red Star. We call for a tablespoon. Now these packets call for two and a quarter teaspoons. 
it doesn't make any difference. So I gently, this is my new technique that I've done. This is gonna be in the new book, by the way. I sprinkle it <laughs> gently so that it doesn't clump. Because huh? maybe I'm too lazy. Like I walk away, if I just do the gentle sprinkle and walk away. Did you just say you're too lazy? I'm, I am lazy. This whole method is about laziness. <laughs> It was a way of not having to do this every day, but get the bread every day. So let me just give the premise. You're gonna make a big batch. It's gonna be four pounds of dough, enough for eight half pound pizzas. But I'm, I'm not a guy who eats a lot of pizzas, so maybe I'll just make one today, or two. My wife will be really mad if I only make one. And me. And you, and you, you think you're eating two. Um, uh, so we store it for up to two weeks in the fridge. That's the whole thing. It's like I don't want to have to mix it. I don't have to wash a million things. So I'm going to mix and store in the same. By the way, did you notice how that yeast hydrated? Yeah, look at that. I'm My gonna... mom says hi too. Hi. It's like family day. This is so great. And that may be pretty much <laughs> all it is. No, no, no. There's lots oh, of that's people really saying good. hi. That's really good. So this is a dough whisk. You can use a wooden spoon, but we like the dough whisk because it doesn't get caught in the wet, sticky dough we're going to make. Again, the premise is if you make a wet dough, that a lot of people would say is too sticky to work with, but they'd be wrong, right? Um, you can store that. That's the secret of our whole set of books, seven books now, with an eighth one coming out on October 12th, which we'll show later. Um, actually, Zoe's grabbing one. Um, but before we do that, or, or do you want to stick? No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give that a quick mix. Then the question of a, of the salt. This is a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of salt. Traditional bakers say you can't put it in the water because it'll kill the yeast, and they're wrong. I just do it. Um, By the really, way, Laura said she heard that you have a pizza that's coming out of the oven for her. her. That's correct. <laughs> that's correct. So if you're really worried about this thing of the salt and the water and poisoning, mix the salt in with the flour. This is six and a half cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. I almost always use like at least two tablespoons of rye, but you don't have to. So I dump it in there and I mix it, and this should only take a few minutes, and I'm gonna have a very wet dough. There was something else I was gonna show. It doesn't look anything like traditional dough ever does. For a minute, it'll look too, it'll look too dry, but it's not, it's really wet. Do you wanna talk about what you're using to stir that? The, the dough whisk? Yeah. I thought I had talked about it already, oh, okay. but maybe you're Sorry, right. Sorry, I wasn't. You, know what? you weren't listening to, you weren't hanging off every word. Okay, so I want you to look at how wet, and I'm gonna put my finger in this dough. So this is why our method works for beginners. Traditional dough recipes say, add flour and knead it until it's silky and smooth and it sort of pushes back. And every beginner, including me when I started with this hobby, uh, 25, 30 years ago, um, you add too much flour and you end up with a doorstop because it's dry. Okay, where did we get five minutes a day, by the way? Okay, so I could have done this in a few minutes. So gather the ingredients, throw them together. I now have enough for four one pound loaves. And if you divide all that effort over four loaves, it's only five minutes. Passive time only. I'm sorry, active time only. <laughs> That was pretty good. All right. So again, th this was inspired by Pop and Fresh Dough, of course. Basically. Of course. Yeah, no, of course. That you have it stored in the fridge and just ready to go. Except it's really good, no artificial ingredients. If you like organic, you can use organic. If you want to use low salt, you can use you can use your low salt. Our first editor said, could they use no salt? And the answer is yeah. It just doesn't taste very good because salt really brings up the flavor. Of, uh, of wheat, which has a very subtle... Before you move on from the mixing, yeah. can you do this in a stand mixer and what would you yes. use? Some years ago, I stopped doing this altogether because I got a stand mixer. And it's if you're doing a lot of this stuff, like we were testing books, the stand mixer is quicker and easier. You can use the metal bowl it comes with and it, you can buy the lids and then you can use that instead of this if you get the big one. So I have this six quart stand mixer Easy to do. Is, is that what you're getting? With a paddle attachment. I actually use the dough hook attachment. Or the dough hook attachment. Yeah, for the bigger mixer, the dough hook works better. For your, for the five quart, the paddle works better. Great. This was based on extensive testing, I think, in your house. So that's a six quart bucket. That's a six quart bucket. Yep. And okay. then I'm gonna 
I'm gonna snap the top on, but then open it a little bit because gas is gonna come out of here. This stays on the counter for two hours, then into the fridge for up to two weeks, and you're just whacking off pieces and putting it in the oven or the grill. Somebody has a question yes. about using fresh ground whole wheat. Yes. And just any kind of whole wheat yeah. added. So whole wheat absorbs more water than white flour. Uh, in the new book we've got coming out, we've got all a sort of a very easy way to correct, but I'll give you a hint. You just have to add more water till it looks like that, and you will succeed. In a recipe this size, it was on the order of a quarter, maybe about a half cup more water. It depends though. We've got versions with vital wheat gluten, without vital wheat gluten. If you don't use vital wheat gluten, try an extra quarter cup, see, see what you think. Um, but one of the problems it with, with see what you think is if you've never made dough before, you're not sure what to think. Okay, <laughs> so see how wet that looks. Oh, the fresh ground. So we've got a post on the website. Uh, if, you, if you go to breadandfive.com, go to the search bar, put in uh, fresh ground whole wheat. And long discussion, it's really complicated because you can never be sure how much moisture is in the wheat kernel that you bought. So I wouldn't have that be the first thing you did. Use commercial whole wheat the first time. And come to the website for like a, a sort of more extensive answer. I just put my foot in a bowl of flour down here. <laughs> Nonetheless, here's one that's been sitting and been in the refrigerator overnight. Are we ready for that, Zoe? Yes, yes, any more, please. Any more good questions? So it looks very different, right? It looks cohesive. It actually looks bubbly and it's not as sticky, but it's pretty sticky. And so the way I use this is as follows. So sprinkle some flour on top of there and reach in with floured hands and you pull out a piece about the size of an orange. Look at that stretch, we did not need that. So I'm gonna make a relatively small one. Maybe I'll make a bigger one because it'll be more impressive on the grill. Um, so one of the many things I learned from Chef Francois is to use the scissor rather than talking about using the gas station steak knife from my childhood. Because nobody knows what that is anymore. <laughs> Nobody's as old as I am. Okay, so you got these sloppy looking dough balls down here. I'm going to actually put them together. This is a bench scraper or dough, dough knife. What do they call this again? Okay. Either. Either yeah. of those works. So don't work in a lot of flour. Zoe also taught me to throw this from the side. It's really impressive. Um, what you want to do is create a gluten cloak, like so. Use enough flour so you don't stick to it, but let most of it fall off. Can you actually see my hands? Is mm -hmm. wide enough angle? Yep. And you sort of gather it around, bring the top around to the bottom, just like that, until it starts to look like a ball. If you start to stick to it, let a little more flour and then drop it. And you can see it looks totally different than this sort of sloppy mess I had here. And it will look like that, and you never need this dough. That's right, that's this is right immediate. after you've mixed right. it, that's and right. then show them the next. And then there's next. this nice stretchy stuff. Yeah. Usually it takes overnight. I would recommend people, you can use it after two hours. It won't, it'll, it'll come together, it'll have stretch, but the flavor is so much better if you can be patient and wait till it's at least overnight. And it's also a little easier to handle it's definitely when easier it's to, chilled. Definitely easier to handle when it's chilled. All right, so now I am gonna flatten it. Looking for an eighth of an inch. I always am impatient. I never get to an eighth of an inch. So one of the things I do when I'm on the grill is I make an oblong pizza. I don't make a round pizza because I'm gonna take advantage of the direct and indirect heat on one of these grills that has multiple burners. And I'd strongly recommend you do this on a grill that has a burner where you can shut one or more of the burners off. There are two burner types and three. This is a two. It's actually an antique from the early 2000s. We have at least 175 requests for you to flip that in the air. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Well, given that, let me make a round one. That took a lot of coaxing, didn't it? Okay. So I flattened it as much as I can with my hands. Oh, and here comes Delta Express. Yeah. Anybody traveling? <laughs> Things are getting better. I've been to Philadelphia recently. 
So, unfortunately, I took an oblong and cut it in half. Maybe that wasn't so smart. One of the things you do in the United States is you can use a rolling pin to get it flat before you start throwing it in the air. As opposed to where? where in Italy, you're not allowed to use a rolling pin and call it true... Uh, what's the... Na Naples pizza. Naples pizza Neapolitan. cannot be made with a Neapolitan pizza. Okay, so... Okay, I get, gotta get farther back because I'm assuming you are gonna... I am like, gonna throw This it in is the gonna be an epic toss. It is gonna be epic. It's probably going to be a disaster. <laughs> so you get your get your knuckles under it, and you you just kind of whoa, like that, that was great. It, the key, the, the gesture, and it, it really did stretch it as the oblong, which is what I was looking for. The gesture is this: raise the hands, and at the top, twist. And I like to move my hand like that at the very end, because then it otherwise it sticks to your finger. This actually was very helpful. Now I'm going to get a. Don't go away. A pizza peel. This is not an eighth of an inch, by the way, but that's okay. I'm gonna put that there. <laughs> I once did that in a professional kitchen with Zoe, and she goes, you can't do that. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna flour this. So if it's floured enough, it will not stick to the grates. Then we can talk about the grates at least briefly, I guess. So okay, I, wait, wait, wait. I gotta yeah, come yeah, yeah. over there. And how are we doing for time? Oh, oh good. Yeah, time. you're you're buzzing along. Buzzing along. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so talk about this. A couple um, of things. Is this an antique grill? Yeah, it's from 2002. <laughs> Works beautifully. I just refurbished the, the the burners, so I know that they're gonna yeah. work very well. So it's been already scraped, but if I hadn't, I'd have used a, a, a steel brush. You could oil these, but I found I don't really need to, so I won't. Um, I might oil it at the end if I feel like it for flavor. Um, and I'm going to lower that. And What's the temperature that you have? It's been on high, front and back the whole time. It's been preheating. The thermometer no longer works, so I don't know what temperature it really is. But it's not 550, which is what it would be if both were on full blast. And can you talk about what yeah. the difference would be if this was charcoal yeah. instead of gas? And the short answer is it would be a lot more work and complicated and much more likely you'll burn it. But I know people can do it because they write in and say, Jeff, it's not that hard. <laughs> and I think our friend Sarah Kiefer, I hope she's on, she's done it. Mm -hmm. Basically, what you're trying to do is capitalize on the fact that some places on the grill are hot and some places aren't. So if you're using wood or charcoal, you don't want it evenly burning hot everywhere. You want to have it gathered on one side. And I'm going to do that by either lowering one of them or turning it off altogether. So my front one right now is on low. Maybe I'll put it on medium. And it's well floured. And I'm actually going to use my hands to kind of stretch it over, right over the grill surface. The, the burner is right under there. And I'm going to close it and try to be patient for three minutes. I actually brought a timer because I'm going to try not to look for three minutes. Now, if you smell it burning before the three minutes, <laughs> open it up, see what's going on. I've got my handy dandy tools. Okay, to can you talk now. about that fork for a second? Did you get that at the gas station? This, or? No, this actually I bought um, oh, wow. back in the day when you went to a store for things like this. Um, <laughs> the re but, but you really should be asking, why is it here? Why is it right, here, right, Jeff? Exactly. Okay, the reason, the reason it's here is if it starts puffing like a pita bread, I, I don't want that. Now, if we were making pita bread, so I would poke it with the, with the fork, and you want something very mm. pointy, a regular fork, not pointy enough. Mm -hmm. okay. Gotcha. Okay, um, okay so uh, people oh. want a little more clarification on why the uneven heat. Okay, because if you do it on direct heat the whole time, it's almost certainly gonna burn and you won't have any control when you put your toppings on. So I'm gonna to try to toast both sides and get it mostly done, then shut the heat off right under it or move it to where the heat isn't. Then I'll put my toppings on, close it and let everything melt together. You're not gonna get beautiful caramelized cheese doing this because there's not really reflection down from the top in an, like there is in an oven, especially convection. This is the opposite of convection. It's all coming from the bottom. I was about to say I, I probably didn't press. So it's no, 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 <laughs> did you not but I, but start I, but it? But I did. I oh. did. So we've got a minute and a half to go. So I'm going to use a technique that I call smelling it. I would say it's. Wait, do that again because yeah, yeah. I don't think people got the people, technique yeah, down. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get kind of over it without burning your nose. <laughs> 
I'm certain it's not burning. So now when I open Did it Did we up, mention that Jeff is a doctor in his, <laughs> in his, uh, the rest of his life? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, a lot of these techniques are the result of 15 years of postgraduate science training. That's right. Thank you, Zoe, for mentioning that. Um, so do we want to grab one more question? Because we have to stall for another minute before I look at that. I sure hope it isn't burning. Keep, do you want to check it? So tell me the purpose of your oven thermometer. Oh, because it came with a grill and, it's, and it, there'd be this. It says, it says zero, zero degrees. It's false. It's, it's not true. Okay. It's so should people have an independent or you don't, it doesn't matter. You well, just get okay. to know your grill. You get to know your grill and it stopped mattering. Like about the time it stopped working, I knew the grill so well, it just didn't matter is the short answer to your question. Okay. Um, so there's 20 sec 25 seconds to go and using my- Everybody's super happy with this sniffing the grill good, good, technique. Good, good. Yes. Okay, so let's see. Oh, look now, at that, it it's beautiful. Puff. Wait, before you before do anything, I... let me make sure they can see that. Now I'm gonna look underneath and it's not, it's just you very slightly- a little more yeah, yeah, so yeah. I can see. It's under. very slightly browning, but I'm gonna let it go further. Can you see yeah, that? It's really it's pale. Yeah, it's really It's pale. I'm gonna leave it on medium. So I want to, I may even put it on high. See the, pro when, you're, when, you're, when you're able to concentrate and there isn't somebody sticking a candle in your face, <laughs> um, you can like be on high and pay close attention to it, maybe keep it up, keep the grill lid up. But I know that this is easy to get distracted with all the fun we're having with all the questions. Is there one? You, you yeah, gesture. okay. So um, somebody wants to know if it would make a difference if you brush the crust with oil before you put it on the grill. Uh, I, I often do it. I was joking at the beginning that you could do it, but you don't have to. There's two ways to make it not stick to the grates. You could either dust it really well, but if you're making sort of a traditional, sort of like a more of a focaccia effect, which has a lot of olive oil, then you can, you can do what the, 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 the viewer suggests and call it focaccia. So one of the secrets of being the lazy guy or gal is use the exact same dough and ingredients, but just configure them differently and pretend it's a completely different recipe. I can sniff that dough from over here. It smells really good. Do you think it's Well, I don't burning? think it's burning, but I can oh, okay. smell it. It right. smells so awesome. It's a good smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the basic premise is I'm going to turn it, uh, toast the other side, and it, if, if the first side is looking good, I can top it at that point. Okay. Which will so give us something else to do. Speaking but, of toppings, yes. I know from this brilliant book that you wrote. And the, the one that we wrote together <laughs> over the last That it says to have years. your toppings all set and ready to go oh, before you, you start. So did you do that? I did that because- Oh, cool, let's first, see what you got. The first 10 years of my bread breaking career, I would occasionally um, make pizza and I would basically start cutting up the cheese and roasting the peppers after I rolled out the dough. And then it would completely stick to the board by the time I was ready to put it in the oven. That was different here, but everything has to be ready. So here's some um, relatively finely cubed fresh mozzarella. I do really prefer fresh mozzarella. Supermarkets always have it. These are roasted red peppers, the big innovation in my life. I stopped um, uh, charring the pepper because then you have to peel it and it's just so depressing. You get this weird I stuff. I love doing that. You do? Yeah. Could you, could you do one for me? <laughs> See, this, this gets as much flavor and I just cut it up and put it on. I know, I know. Okay, let me ask you a question yeah. about the cheese before you move on. Up. Oh, and the rag is a good rag. look. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Um, for because you're doing it in the grill and you yeah. don't have any top heat, do you um, use? Where did you go? No, because it's gonna burn. <laughs> oh, let's yeah. see. Let's, have a let's look. see. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful. It's pretty good. We're yeah, we're okay great. with that. We're okay with that. There was that one slightly charred spot. <gasps> it smells so good. But I'll eat that part. Right? No, no, no. I love that. That's great. Um, so back to the cheese. Yeah, because but, you don't have the heat coming from above, do yeah. you grate the cheese finer? A little finer than we say in any of our books, where okay. we say something like for the oven, we do half inch mm -hmm. cubes. Mm -hmm. Here I did a lot smaller than that. I mean, I bought the kind of fresh mozzarella that's already sliced, I think quarter inch slices. And I just started hacking at it with a kitchen knife. I also have sauce that I'm calling pizza sauce, but it's nothing but four cans, four 15 ounce cans of fresh, not fresh, canned Roma tomatoes. <laughs> you can use Italian ones like that, but you don't have to. I actually don't usually, that's not my usual brand. Um, somewhere I have a spoon, 
But if I don't, it's, oh, no, that's here. good. Sometimes I put the sauce on with a brush if I don't want a lot. Oh, Especially are we ready for saucing? Yeah, yeah, oh, I great. Think so because okay. I may as well. It takes a long time to. Uh, the brush is actually great, and it, just don't touch this kind of silicone brush to the grill, or it will melt. Have you learned this from no, experience? No, you, based on my uh, extensive science education, I know how to avoid that. Um, so basically all I did with the four cans of Roma tomatoes was I reduced them by about uh, one third. So the finished volume was two thirds of the start. And then I used, uh, thanks Delta, um, I used um, uh, potato masher to break up the tomatoes. Is this uh, a brilliant a, method in it your is, book? It's in the books, but I just gave it away for free. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be a traditional pizza. Did I bring out the basil? Forgot it. It's inside. Should, should we run in the kitchen and get it? Or is that just too humiliating? <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to follow you? Well, I don't know. Can you with that setup? Uh. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So at some point, when I start to become fearful that, oh, it depends how much cheese you like. I'm using, this is a pretty thick American style pizza. Yeah. At some point, so it'll support a lot of cheese. I don't think we tell them to use this much cheese. We I know, that's three. a lot of cheese. Yeah, I know. That's awesome. Because I like a I, lot of cheese. Yeah, I know. Most of the time we do this sort of very traditional, uh, oh my goodness, <gasps> I think the basil delivery woman oh, look is at here. That. Thank you, Thanks, Laura. Laura. You're so that, kind. Look at this. Well, we have some. Well, now we know basil. someone was watching. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. So I'm going to put that in there. Um, this is fresh basil, and it's really a different animal than dried basil. So really... will you? Uh, okay. Just... Will you do that open, or are you going to close it? I meant to close it, but the basil situation distracted me. Gotcha. That was my wife, Laura. Thank you so much, my dear. Um, <laughs> Two ways you can use the basil. You could bake it on there with the cheese, which I probably prefer, but for every hmm. picture of a pizza top with basil, it's put on at the end because it's so beautiful, and that's what I'm going to do. I now. like it on the end because it tastes fresher. Taste, it's a different deal, and yeah. also, like, each bite will be different. Some bites have no basil, and some bites have a lot of basil. Mm -hmm. depends on how you're compulsive that way. It all depends on yeah. what yeah. Okay, I'm going to look at it. I should have put another three minutes on, but we were blabbing, right? <laughs> okay, we're doing great for time. Do you typically do one at a time? Yeah, because my grill isn't a giant. I have a feeling yeah. if, if I have the three burner one, which I think you have, that you could have, you could have the middle one off. The thing is you really need a blank space for when it starts to burn. So you can move it. So you, you can mean, move it, right. So, it. so if this one was burning now, I would just turn this front one completely off. I'm just thinking, would three really help you? I probably should have thought this through <laughs> before you turn the camera on, but I didn't think you were going to ask me the trick question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but honestly, this becomes a very organic thing in your backyard, uh, and it's much funnier, you know, when guests are here. And, Okay, that has a minute. It looks like that cheese situation that you have going on. What do you mean? Say it has a minute. Can you like to go? Like long... it needs to bake longer. To bake so longer. do you want to talk about yeah, uh, this peppers. brilliant? Oh, peppers well, would be good. Or the gonna, I was going to take people over to this oh, gorgeous oh, oh, display that you okay, have. Okay, but we have these books <laughs> which just happen to be out. So we have led a charmed life. Um, we got to write seven cookbooks together. Uh, since 2007. I'm going to cry, I think. But, I know. Um, and it's been a long time since I've seen you. This is really it's fun. It's been a crazy year. Um, the only medical advice I'm going to give, first of all, thank you for anybody who's bought any one of these, because if you hadn't bought it, we wouldn't get to do others. And, and look, there's that cake book Oh, there's book a in new the cake mix. book. <laughs> it's called Zoe Bakes Cakes. And the joke I made on our website, by the way, something's burning. Oh. Okay, okay. Wait, do it from the other side so I can see yeah, what yeah. you're doing. It, it was just, it's, it's really not bad. One side of it was getting a little too much. It looks great. So I'm going to let it toast some more because we're going to blab about, we're going to hawk our cookbooks. Should we go back over there? Yeah, um, somebody's asking about um, other kinds of toppings if you're not a tomato fan. Yeah, so using bechamel, 
goji, things that become really soft and liquidy are great alternatives. And we actually, if we don't run out of time, which it looks like we're doing pretty well, I'm either talking too fast or we timed it right. Yeah. Um, we've got goat cheese and you'll see how that spreads and Do you want to do another soft. one? Yeah, we didn't finish with the books though. Oh, we oh. Have to say, you don't think people got the picture? Got, this, this book is new. <laughs> oh, it's coming yeah. out, it's been yes. launched. It's available for pre-order anywhere, bookstores, online sellers. It's called The Best of Art is in Bread in Five Minutes a Day. And it's sort of, it's really designed for people who don't have any of the books and want to know what has everything that was good in all the others if I wanted it in one book. Plus there are some secret tips in there that didn't make it in the other book that might be on the website, but you'd have to search for them for an hour and a half. And our website is, you know, it's not that professional. And also, Zoe uh, has this cake book, and uh, I think it's supported by her TV show called Zoe Bakes on Magnolia and something with two words. A discovery Plus. Discovery Plus. Okay. <laughs> so really, all that we're waiting for here is for melting of the cheese. Okay. Do you think I should, un like, flip this thing wildly open? Yes, dramatic. I'm afraid it's dramatic. My fear is that it's not any more melted than it was <laughs> We'll soon find out. Not bad. Now, one thing I've noticed happens with fresh mozzarella is that you get this liquid collecting. Oh, and I just go like just this. dump it off. I just dump it off. You don't want that going into the bread. Hilarious. Wouldn't you say? I mean, yeah. otherwise, it's not adding. I don't think it's meaningfully adding to the effect. That right there was worth this whole video. Well, that's a secret right there. Exactly. <laughs> And by the way, don't just reach in with your fingers like I just did. <laughs> Although, I'm not sure how you'd have done that. I guess I brought out these guys, but it's much more... This is what you should do. Let's you take that You sound like a... Yeah, you have like a little musical thing going on there. Ding. Okay. Basically, you can, you can do that. That would have worked. And so much liquid is collecting. Oh, speaking of liquidy mozzarella cheese... Let's talk a little bit about buffalo mozzarella. Because I've been experimenting with it lately. It's this, I guess it really is made from buffalo. I don't really yeah. know. Is it really? Yes, okay. it actually is. Oh, God, I have a chef here to ask about his video. Um, it's very high moisture. I find, in general, it's not a great choice with our wet dough. So how is our dough different? So it's wetter, so you can store it for up to two weeks in the fridge. But that means if there are toppings that are just leaking fluids onto it, Wish I hadn't said it that way. Uh, it didn't come out right. So if you've got a topping that's too high moisture, which mozzarella is a food with a lot of moisture in it, uh, it doesn't work well. But here's where it works beautifully. If you make a plain flatbread without any toppings, so a dry bread, like a pita bread. I, I did this all during COVID, during the winters. I started buying the, the, the buffalo mozzarella, let it come to room temperature, make really hot flatbreads, bring them to the table with various things that would be great on just slapped on the hot bread. And it doesn't have time to give up all that moisture. So you don't bake the cheese basically. And it works super well. It's basically, you're assembling a flatbread dinner at the table. It was a hit. Anyway. I put it on mine all the time. <laughs> and what happened? What happened? Does it doesn't you get too You know what though? Wet? Is that I oh, wait, don't wait, wait, do you it. you use our recipe. That's the Yeah, of <laughs> course, of course I do. But um, I don't use it as the main cheese. Like I'll oh, do like a few blobs sure, of it because sure, it's so sure. delicious. Uh, lots yes. of people are asking about pesto. Oh, it's per we have pesto recipes in multiple books. You can use it this, to the other questioner. You can use it instead of tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. Use rel you know, don't glob on the sauce like you do in typical pizza. Although we have a Chicago deep dish where we do glob on the sauce, but that's a different dough. We have specialized doughs in our pizza book called flatbread and pizza in five minutes a day. Or is it pizza and flatbread in five minutes a day? Um, and we have a Chicago deep dish in there. Uh, the Chicagoans are shutting off their phone right now. Um, remember we were I love that pizza. Remember? Okay, anyway, it's great. If we d By the way, we do it differently. Zoe and I don't do it the exact same way. In fact, Lots many of, of the things. recipes reflect a battle. Uh, and what you're getting in the books or the website is a compromise. Uh, Often pretty good compromise. Um, so I okay. can't complain. Do you ever do a pita bread on the grill? If I had stopped. Yeah. Remember when I was attacking it with the, with the oh, pointy fork? Oh, okay. Yeah. If I had not put any toppings which would weigh it down. Yes. And encourage the puffing. Yes. I've never had one puff like a ball, but I okay. have had open, I've had, had it open up in, in 
pockets. Okay. Yes. Short um, answer, yes. Okay. Um, and just, uh, there's more questions about different types of cheeses and toppings. Yeah. And let's, uh, let's, since this is now off. Okay. We yeah. could actually. Is, oh, did you turn the grill the front, off? The, off? Front, the front burner is off. Okay. But it's still baking from the back. It's circulating convection current, whatever. Okay. Um, so it might be ready to go. I would leave it. I would continue to leave it. Okay. Um, and I might want the bottom a little toasted. So at the end, I'm going to just very carefully put it under direct heat again. Okay. Um, maybe we'll do that now. <laughs> yeah. This shouldn't take very long. Any other, can we start with a question while we watch this thing toast? Yeah, or, or do you want to actually um, show them how to shape another one? Because I think that yes. happened pretty quickly. Yes, yes, but. Yes, but. You gotta watch that. Oh, oh, it's sure. High, it's kind of on high. Well, it's more oh, than Oh, got kind it. Of on high. it. It is, it, it actually is, in fact, is on high. <laughs> on high. And. Okay. Actually, yeah, it went on. Okay. It, it does take a minute to really wreck it. To wreck it? Yeah, I mean, to, to, to really burn it. It's weird, though. Time has a weird dimension when you're talking, yes. having wine with people, when people come Where is here my wine? Barbecue. It's too early for wine. Oh. Um, so you, I have burned a bunch of these. So <laughs> I don't want to do it now in front of... No, don't do Don't you know, burn it. Don't burn in it. In front of millions of... But I think, I think uh, shaping the dough again would be... And then also we would end up with more pizza for me to That's eat. That's right, because you think you're going to get lunch out of it. Because I do think that. Um, okay. Well, here's one that I've already formed. Okay. Maybe I'll do it right on the pizza peel. And you were starting out, I know you didn't weigh that, although yeah. you do have a scale right there. I do have a scale. Um, but you're starting out <laughs> half with, pound. Uh, with eight ounces, right. half pound. Okay. I'm starting out with eight ounces because I'm making relatively small ones. The truth is, if truth be told, these are probably, why don't we weigh it? Here, let's do it. I think this is like 10 or 12 ounces, capitalizing on 15 And um, when you're measuring out the dough, you no, weigh it? eight ounces exactly. Oh. Sorry. Go I don't know ahead. if anybody can hear that because of the plane. <laughs> okay, they're see, are they seeing that as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, so okay, you about really do always do it that shape. Uh, yeah, because it's so much easier on the grill. Now, Got our, it. Okay. our friend and colleague, Sarah Kiefer, did one on our website, I think two or three posts ago. If you go to Bread and Five and scroll down to Sarah's post, yeah. she put a stone on the grill, yes. which dampens all that direct heat, Yes. and she was able to make a round one easily. The reason I like this, it gets really toasty on the underside, and you don't get that with the stone. Yeah, so, okay. One of the things that's really weird about dough is it wants to be stretched in one direction or another. So making an oblong is easier than making a circle. We'll use this a little bit. I like these French style rolling pins. Somebody is begging to you to check that pizza so it doesn't burn. No, but here's the thing. To the, <laughs> oh, right. she's right because I put the, I put the uh, <laughs> if it does burn, I'm going to pretend it didn't. It actually didn't. It did not. Here, I'll show you. I'll good, show you. good. No, it looks great. It looks great. I feel like I should I'm eat gonna, that. I'm going to call it done. Okay. And I'm going to put it on a, a perfectly shaped plate that I've gotten for this exact purpose. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's just the right shape. <laughs> and what I'm going to do, there's a couple things you could do with a hot pizza. One is you can... Eat it. You can, you can just put the basil on. Now again, you're not going to get beautiful caramelization of cheese. If you want that, you can't really do it on the grill. Unless your grill has like a top burner is there such a grill zoe a top burner a top burner yeah it's grill. called a pizza oven do you want to say more words about that <laughs> a wood-fired pizza oven yeah, has like reflects yeah. have all kinds of heat circulating around right this, this and our dough does beautifully in a wood-fired yeah. pizza oven we did events in downtown minneapolis at the minneapolis bread festival years ago with a wood-fired pizza oven it was great so this, this will wilt a little bit, but it won't lose its beautiful it color. It looks great. Put that over here. Um, okay, we want to do this one. Actually, Jeff, can you put it in front of me so I can put, show them? Put what in front? Oh, that pizza. Oh, oh, oh. What do you think of my visual on that? I, don't, I think I could have done a better job. No, with I think basils. it looks great. I just want to show them up close. Did you see how I um, almost slipped it right off onto the ground? Sorry, there's the, the chipmunk. <laughs> The chipmunk. There's like all kinds. 
<laughs> I just I knocked a big bottle of water over it. That was funny. Okay. Why are we talking about a chipmunk? Uh, um, and are you going to put any of these beautiful peppers on it? Well, that could be the next one. Oh, great. Okay. So while that was Perfect. done, I'm going to chop up those peppers okay. using a kitchen knife. But okay. wait, but wait, there's more. Um, ordinarily, I wouldn't love doing the pepper chopping on the same board as the dough because the, the, the pepper oils are going to mix with the flour to create a paste. Not sure what to do Somebody's asking why the pizza on the grill takes longer than a pizzeria pizza. Because the pizzeria oven, even outside of Italy, is really, really hot and it's on tremendous thermal mass. That bottom floor of those ovens is either thick stone or thick, thick iron. And so uh, they go for 800 degrees. Uh, this is at best 500 degrees and it's all coming from the bottom and it's not circulating around. And the reason it's taking so long is because we have to be careful not to scorch that bottom crust. That's the short answer. I mean, I could get this thing really hot, but you're just asking for it to burn. Somebody suggested yeah. that we have Prosecco to serve at yeah. this meal. Yeah. This would be really good. And I'm in totally agreement. Nothing's cold. <laughs> I'm so sorry. There's red wine if you want that. Um, as I say, though, I ser give you two serious medical pieces of medical advice. Oh, great. When you do this, don't drink because you will burn yourself. <laughs> and the second thing is, and I'm serious now, please get a vaccine if you don't have one yet. Because oh. we want you to come to these parties and not be inside the rest of the winter, summer, or whatever it is. So get vaccinated. Okay, but hold on. I forgot. I turned it off. <laughs> so let's put it back on. Honestly, when you make and we it, didn't even have the prosecco. We did not. Oh, seriously, there's no know why. Um, when you get together with people to do this, get some experience because it, honestly, if you are having wine or beer, you're gonna mess them up. If, unless you're really automatic. Okay, I'm gonna call that ready to go. And I like to. You think they can hear this? I, I don't. I'm not sure. Uh, Who knows? Yes. yes. I. But they can at least see you. Okay. Good. That's the point. Yes, they can okay. hear you. I like to stretch it a little more, just as I. I learned uh, this from you with baguettes, by the way. Oh. Oh. Then thing. this must be brilliant. Woo! So that might be. Great. An eighth of an inch. Okay. So eighth of an inch is what you're going for. Mm -hmm. In true. Neapolitan style pizza, which isn't made this way. Uh, this is a Providence, Rhode Island specialty, isn't it? A grilled pizza? I think it is. I think is Peter Reinhardt invented it. So oh, thank you, Peter. Oh, thank you, Peter. The uh, premier American bread baker. So, he's not here with us today, but in spirit. <laughs> in spirit. He's in Providence, <laughs> which I'm told is a great city. Um, okay, somebody asked for something. We were going to do it. Oh, shape another. I did shape another one. You shaped another one. Okay. Yep. Let's. Okay, let's talk about what we'll put on this next one. No tomato. We're going to just go wild. Okay. okay. Not so traditional. Four cans. Just boil it down and smash them. You can put roasted garlic in that, oregano, three other things I can't fluently come out with, but they're in the book. <laughs> do you remember what we, what we suggest? <laughs> You could do the basil before, right in the sauce. And it's it, what's so great about pizza is literally anything will taste good. My father-in-law makes a right a pizza from the Chinese restaurant. No, the pizza bottom, and then he takes all the Chinese food and the rice and spreads it out on it. It's really good. <laughs> so thanks, Marvin, for the tip. Oh my goodness. Laura, okay, you, you have um, really? about fifteen minutes, and I think that people need to hear me review your pizza. So, Re what do you mean by review? Like, slice that thing up so I can oh, eat it. Oh, but what if it's terrible? <laughs> See, that's the problem. Okay, all right, well, we'll talk about that for a second. Uh -huh. Let me get a other cutting board. Be right back. Because <laughs> I don't want to do it on this dirty one. My friend is going to eat pizza. Oh, thank you. Then. God, so what consider. if it's like not cooked? It's going to be so, awesome. It looks so good. Right. So, I like to use these, which are called pizza wheel pizza wheel mm -hmm. um, and it makes it much easier because if you start doing it with a knife it's going to start sliding everywhere this makes it much better mm -hmm. so looks that good looks great yeah. so crunchy gonna, yeah that's what we're going for if i were more patient and you, there weren't people watching i would have let the bottom get crunchier This is a really traditional American style with that lot of mozzarella cheese. All 
right. Are you, did you eat lunch? Mm. 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 Okay. That tastes delicious. Mm. Okay. Yeah, bravo. Okay, should we good? I'm not gonna poke this one. Let's see if it if it pitas. Oh, I see. Okay. One of the secrets of getting a pita to puff. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I've got to get some. I've got to. <laughs> one of the secrets you're... is it's got to be very thin. Oh, okay. Yep. It looks very thin. So if you didn't get it to an eighth of an inch, it'll probably never mm -hmm. do this. See that? Look at that. That's just I what you want. I think I'm seeing it, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah, maybe maybe side lit. It. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Uh, either that or I'm about to barbecue my phone. Right, that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> either that or I'm exaggerating how much it's puffing, but it no, is No, it looks puffing. good. All right, let's see what the bottom is doing. Yeah, it could go further. Okay. Okay, what were we gonna make? Oh, we were gonna chop the peppers. Okay, so two ways to do this peppers. Um, I'm gonna talk uh, goat cheese and pepper, red, red and yellow and orange roasted peppers. In the books, we talk about scorching these. You can either do it under the broiler till the skin turns literally black, chars, and then you've gotta rub the skin. If Zoe's around your house, she'll do it for you. Or you have to rub the, this really, it's like charcoal. And I will admit that that really, really, really rich flavor comes from that blackened stuff. But this is a, a reasonable second choice. And I'm all about the shortcut. So- How many times in this video have you said that you're lazy? I, 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 I didn't use that. I didn't use that term. You, you're the one This said. time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> No, honestly, I, I started baking when I was a medical resident, and I didn't have time for this. So I had to find a way to not spend the whole day in the kitchen. Because I, I, was, I was getting home, and I needed to go to sleep. I actually well, don't even... we're really grateful that you did, because it's great. Well, I love thank it. thank you. All right, well, so that's that. One time I was doing this, again, in a professional kitchen, and I was showing my fantastic amateur knife technique, and Zoe was like this. <laughs> so I've gotten better. Okay. That may have been right after you said you got the knife from the gas station. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> um, okay, so what did I say? Goat cheese mm -hmm. is a really good choice for pizza on the grill because it doesn't really have to melt. If you let it come to room temperature, let the log of goat cheese come to room temperature, it's, it just has to sort of warm. It's not gonna flow and melt and move around on there. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look you at what's look? going on in the grill. Shall we? Yes, we shall. <laughs> Ta -da. No, it doesn't look like much. <laughs> well, that's okay. Where is my um, spatula? Oh, just use your hand. You know yeah. you want to. <laughs> okay, that's, that's sort of ideal. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and I'm gonna carefully uh, not at all carefully. I'm just going to blob little blobs of goat cheese. And it's not exactly elegant. Can you move the plate here. so they can yeah. see where you're blobbing yeah. it? There are probably a lot of ways to do this. <laughs> uh, you could, you could pre-blob them, I suppose. <laughs> but think about it. Think of how this particular kind of cheese just doesn't lend itself to really a cooking show at all. I don't know if you'll be using this on Zoe Bakes on Magnolia <laughs> and Discovery Plus. Oh, look at you remembering. Oh my God. <laughs> I figured the fourth time I said it. Well, um, it's going to be fun. Um, even if you don't have those stations, you can at least watch the preview, which is on YouTube, <laughs> which I did. <laughs> um, Are you saying you haven't watched my show, I Jeff I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the DVDs. Okay. <laughs> We watch a lot of movies. Oh, oh that kidding? was painful. Okay, you're all right. Yes, I think okay. I'll be all right. Truth be told, should I say oh, this? Oh no, no, no! Don't be truthful. I don't have cable. We don't have cable. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have cable. Oh, you kill me! All right. So at about the point where the way I'm thinking of this cheese, it's like an adhesive for some other topping. Oh, I just thought of something else we can chop up. That is roasted uh, zucchini. Mm -hmm. 
You've got 10 minutes oh, to oh, get easy, this all done. Easy, okay, easy, okay. easy, peasy. I'm putting it on low. So whoever reminded me last time to save the last one, <laughs> if out. he or she or she or he could let me know, uh, that would be much appreciated. So there was another little jar somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, I roasted these on the grill yesterday. So to my father-in-law's point, you have some weird leftover, you recycle it into today's pizza. Chinese food on the pizza. I don't know. So all kidding aside, you wanna you wanna keep your knuckles, right? Mm -hmm. Zoe? Yes, keep your don't knuckle. put the knuckles in the recipe. Well, don't put the fingertips where the knife is gonna go. Are you getting this? You may as well. This is another health tip, oh, right? Because you're gonna give knife lessons. Here. Well, there are That's three. Awesome. Well, there were three health tips, right? Get a vaccine. Oh. What was the second one? <laughs> don't get drunk while you're yeah, Don't drink. Don't drink a lot when you're sticking your fingers in this. Um, okay, so now I've got <clears throat> a combination of delicious things. I've got, I've got adhesive working on a flatbread, which some people call goat cheese. I'm really? Use Nobody calls it that. Yeah, I know. I know. That's why we were original, Zoe. So. Okay, it's not going to get, like, no, it's not going to flow. No, but it will spread. It will spread. I'm going to, since we it only smells have amazing. 10 minutes now, I'm going to come over here with this enormously heavy. So we're going to go for <clears throat> an aesthetic. One of the other things I learned from Zoe is that part of the experience in the high-end restaurant is how it looks and you can't get away from that so i'm gonna style this pizza it's beautiful with four colors three well no yellow orange red and green jeff are you colorblind no okay that's the green <laughs> this is the yellow no that was white okay by the way i touched it and it's really soft yeah it looks great it's holding the shape but it's totally melted which is interesting about the way that works um okay i just you want a little red just move your board just slightly so we yeah. can see. It yes. looks great. I don't want any more green. Um, and if it doesn't look sort of wet enough, that's what, I, wait a minute, we've got something else coming to sort of tie it all together in an Italian but way. there's more. It's not really anything surprising. Wait, um, oh, and here's some of those blackened bits that give so much flavor. That's actually desirable. And one there. And because they're in sort of dry areas, don't, you don't have to follow me for this. I've got a little bit of extra virgin olive oil that I'm gonna liberally use. So when I said a little bit, I wasn't being sincere. I'm gonna use a lot. Somebody said, what if you oiled it? You could oil the grates, you could oil the underside. It would give more of a focaccia and is there effect. A, sorry, is there a live flame under there while you're at, oiling? At this moment, there is, but it's on low. Ooh. One other thing to think about is, especially if you use the lower end salt in the dough. So we say a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half for a four pound batch. If you're not using cured meats or olives, which I have over there but forgot all about, there's not enough salt in this. So I would, I would give it a little bit, unless you can't eat salt for medical reasons. Just so you people know, there's not a ton of salt coming out of there. So he didn't just dump about three tablespoons of salt. Right. No, it's no, a no. tiny little it's, bit. It's, yeah. Can you see Somebody that? Somebody recommended... Um, I love doing this. I love the noise. <laughs> It's like a percussion That's instrument. So. Um, somebody recommended a drizzle of honey <clears throat> and a balsamic glaze. Awesome. I just had pizza like that that somebody else made, and it was delicious. They used balsamic in like a curly cue along the top, and fresh tomatoes sliced really thin uh, works extremely well. It's a great suggestion. Okay, we've got about five more minutes if there's anything that you is there wanted else we didn't see any other question oh this was really big a few years ago which was to take fresh greens dress them with olive oil um salt them and do something like i did over there get a get a pizza really hot and just put it we had this in seattle when we were, we were doing book tour just dr drop the greens on and they start sort of wilt but they don't cook it's mm -hmm. fantastic. It's the whole meal. So, that's or you can put it on for. after, that's, and then it stays a little. Or is that what you what meant? meant? Oh, yeah, yeah. I see. I, I thought you meant in the it. grill. If you bake greens like this, they yeah. get really sickly looking. Yes, good. They're, just, okay. they're not that beautiful. Perfect. And as I said, I learned about how it has to look a certain way. <laughs>
The only ingredients I forgot about completely and utterly were the olives. And you can guess what I would have done. I would have sliced them and put them on instead of the peppers. Do people have other questions? Maybe we'll quit five minutes. Quick while we're ahead. Quick no, I think asking for more. Uh, people are just saying thank you. And we will post this onto Instagram uh, TV so that it will always be here and you can always watch Jeff sniffing his grill. Yeah, that'd be so great. <laughs> And so great and so oh, fun. Thank you yes. so much. Um, we're going to do some kind of virtual book tour in October for that new book, The Best of Artisan Bread in Five Minutes a Day. And that will probably be it for us, but not Zoe, because she's got more <laughs> sweets books coming out in this life. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you all. This was great. The only problem is I don't know you how don't to know stop it. <laughs> So that could be a problem. <laughs> Let's just behave normally. Then. Okay. Maybe I can help. And now.